Welcome to the Exodus Logistics Learning Centers Dispatcher 101 training for beginners. Uh, it's Wednesday evening, so it's kind of uh, basics for everyone. And we have several, I mean, we have a bunch of new people that, uh, that join, so it's growing, it's steadily growing. So, um, but welcome everyone. How are you? How's everybody doing? Number one. Okay, so you guys want to be independent. You want to be freight dispatchers, huh? Okay. <laughs> um, let me see here. Let me put my, you know, everybody. Okay. Got a lot of people coming in. They're, they're, they're going to still be coming in. We're going to get to about close to 80, 90 people. Uh, I'm, I'm just, it's uncontrollable. Um, so, so let's get started. And we got new people in here. Wednesday, so our trainings, if you're here, you did everything correctly as far as um, logging in, creating your username and password for back office access. You are, you've gotten here as far as the uh, live trainings. And I'm sharing my screen, hopefully, for um, the live trainings Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So whatever time zone you're in, you kind of made the adjustments accordingly. Um, that's for beginners, okay? Saturdays at noon. I combine the Saturday noon classes with those people who registered as um, for seminar training as well as beginner level dispatch training. So I combined uh, the two of you together and I'm letting people in now as we speak. So, and then Sundays were more intermediate more uh, a little bit more advanced intermediate so that's the philosophy that's the process so <clears throat> i'm developing a course outline if you will to share with you guys to um start you off with if you are wanting to be an independent dispatcher my goal or my wish i should say is for you to have already in place your um your business structure set up, right? Your um, LLC, your uh, S Corp, your EIN number, those things have been set up. If you have not, that's, don't worry. I mean, that's not a problem. You can still learn while you're setting that up. And we also have resources for you to uh, refer to to get some information. Now, I don't help you set that up, but I guide you in the, in the direction towards that, okay? Because I don't know your business philosophy. I don't know your the makeup of what, how you want your business structured going forward. So, but I, I provide information, if you will. And in our website, in our back office, Dispatcher 101 is going to be your main. This area is going to be your friend. Once you get approval for the back office access, this is going to be your friend with a lot of information for you. So under um, business setup, the business setup page is where you'll find uh, information, let me log in, about uh, your, your business structure, how you want to structure it, different sites you can refer to, and that's pretty much it for that. Um, Keisha said she's doing, um, it varies, Keisha says she's doing DBA, sending papers off last week about how long it takes. It, it varies what type of workload they have, case logs they have backed up, how far they are backed up, and how long it takes for them to process your specific requirements. So I would say a week, two weeks most. So, um, but let's get to the, the, the foundational concept of being a dispatcher. So an independent freight dispatcher is someone who dispatches for owner operators, truck drivers, carriers, right? That's what you guys want to do. You want to find loads freight cargo for the truck drivers send them to wherever they they want to go paying whatever they they need to be paid and you get compensated for that service that's essentially what a dispatcher does now how that's done varies on your skill set and, and where you send them and, and the type of equipment types of those carriers that you're dispatching for on this training platform we focus on three starting out the three major equipment types um, and under module one, 
And this is a self-paced training platform as well, where you can uh, learn at your own pace, yet still attend the three live trainings, and one of which is tonight, and you can ask the questions and get those questions answered when you kind of get stuck along your journey of your self-paced learning, okay? That is my goal with this online presence. So the three major equipment types, starting under module one in carrier acquisition, 53 foot dry vans, and I'm gonna tell you why they are the three major, why we consider them to be the three major equipment types and why you should choose them starting out for your business to make your transition into this space easy for you, okay? 53 foot dry vans, 53 foot refrigerated trailers or what we call reefers and the 48 or 53 foot flatbeds, okay? So the definition of an equipment type is the truck, the tractor or the power only unit. In other words, the part that the truck driver is actually in driving, the truck itself, the tractor or the power unit and the type of trailer that is connected to it. Okay, that defines equipment type. So in this example, this is a tractor or power unit and this is a dry van trailer. So the combination of the two is called a dry van equipment type. Okay, you follow that? Okay, the second one is a, it looks similar to the dry van. It is a refrigerated, um, it is a refrigerated trailer because it has a reefer or a temperature control unit on the front of the trailer. It's called a TCU, temperature control unit, right? TCU. It looks similar to a dry van trailer, but because of this, it helps keep whatever is being transported or hauled or moved cool to a certain temperature according to the agreement between the broker and the carrier. pre cool zero degrees, minus five degrees, minus 10 degrees, what have you, according to that rate confirmation or what have you, okay? If a tractor or a power unit was connected to this refrigerated trailer, then this would be a refrigerated or a reefer equipment type, okay? And then the third of the three categories that we start you off on is the flatbed. We call them skateboards. There are different variations of flatbeds, but flatbeds, this is a flatbed um, trailer, and this is a truck connected to it. So this is a flatbed equipment type, 48 or 53 foot. So you got 48 by 102s, 53 by 102s, right? 102 wide, 53 feet long, and 102 um, inches wide. So, okay, so those are the three equipment types. So why do, why does Exodus Logistics Learning Center and the Dispatch 101 course recommend starting off with these? If you go out on any major interstate, I-95, I-75, I-85, any major interstate, you're gonna see one of these equipment types multiple times. They're out there the most. They, you can find loads for them on the load boards the easiest and they pay the better rates. Those are good reasons to start off your dispatching journey in your company with these equipment types. Now I have people calling me about box trucks, Sprinter vans, cargo vans, hot shots, and things like that. And that's fine. But I say start off, get your feet wet, learn the skill set of dispatching, and then you can decide to go to the other specialized equipment types. Okay. That's my that's just my advice. You can take that. That's just my advice. Okay. So what so if you're gonna go after one of these three equipment types, the two documents that you need for your company, okay? The two documents you need starting out for your company are your dispatcher agreement, which is the contract between you and that carrier, okay? And I see people right take, taking notes, so I'm gonna take my time and break it down and actually show you what that is, okay? So I'm gonna go on the forms and documents, which is a resource on the website, okay? So here's our forms and documents page. So if you get access, so our dispatcher agreement, and 
the carrier profile. Those are the two important starting documents you need for your company. Why? Number one, the dispatch agreement is essentially the contract, if you will, for lack of a better word, between you, the dispatching company, and that owner operator, that carrier, that truck driver, saying, hey, I'm the truck driver. <clears throat> I want you to be my dispatcher. Let's agree. You sent me this contract. I'm going to fill it out according. I agree to the terms on the contract. I'm going to pay you what you want to be paid, things of that nature. It just, it just sets you up an agreement between you and the, um, and the carrier. You do not need to share your dispatcher agreement with any broker. This is an internal contract between you and the carrier. There's no need for the dispatching company, uh, Bruno's dispatching company or dispatching service or uh, Gerline's dispatching services. You guys don't need to share the dispatcher agreement with the broker. It, it has nothing to do with the broker. It's just the contract and the understanding, if you will, between you and that carrier. You're providing the service. They're paying you for the service you're providing. That's essentially it. This is the dispatcher agreement in PDF format. Okay, I also have it in the Word version where these are templates where you guys can edit the Word version for your specific company, regenerate it for your specific company as an example, and then send that in PDF format to the carrier to fill out and return to you. Okay, so the dispatch agreement is, is essentially saying everything that's yellow on the dispatch agreement, and this is just a, a small condensed version, everything that's yellow on this needs your information replaced with that okay so for example the dispatcher dispatcher company name let's say bruno's dispatching service business phone number whatever that is 1-888-555-1212 whatever your number is business number you may not have a business number starting out that's okay as long as they can get a hold of you somehow, a personal cell phone. I've been using my personal cell phone for years. So I have a business line, but I people get to me quicker with the personal cell phone. Ask anybody. Somebody can call me right now and I'll pick, this is the cell phone. I have a business line, it's routed to my cell phone. So the calls forward to the cell, so the business line rings for like four or five times. If I don't answer, it routes to my, cell phone and i'll pick it up so okay uh email you may not have a business email starting out put your put your personal email there but at some point to look more professional you you want to put a professional email there you want to put a professional business line there because you want to give the appearance and the presence of a, a professional business at some point you may not do that starting out and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We have, you have to crawl before you walk. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anyone tell you that. I had a personal email and a personal cell phone for my dispatching company back in 2016 for about six months. Did, did you think that stopped me from dispatching loads and booking loads with carriers? No, not at all. So did I make money with the personal and, and uh, cell phone and personal email? Yes, I did. So, but I'm saying though, at some point you want to, if you are able to progress to a business line, do it. If you're able to progress to a business email, do it. Okay. And then a website. You want to have a web presence. We are, we are becoming gradually more and more technologically sound and technologically advanced as a society. People are going online, doing a lot of things. So if you have a web presence, it would be great for your company. It'll, it'll put you at a competitive edge and an advantage, especially if you can funnel traffic to your site and stuff like that, okay? So that's just there. So this is the agreement. You send this to the carrier. Let's say I'm a carrier. Let's say Bruno sent this to me. I'm filling this out. I'm gonna put my information here, carrier, my, my um, truck number, my trailer number, my motor carrier number or MC number, DOT number. Right here where it's yellow, you're going to replace where it says dispatcher or dispatch name here. You're going to replace that with your professional company name, Bruno's Dispatching Services. Down here, same thing. So I would copy, put Bruno Dispatching Service, copy that term and paste it everywhere it says dispatcher name here. And the same goes true for anyone else with their dispatching company. You just replace it. 
just edit and change it, okay? So this is the dispatch agreement. Right here, <clears throat> this, people get, people have questions right here. So I'm gonna go over this just a little bit. This area that says limited power of attorney. What this is, is you send this to me, I'm a carrier, and you wanna get set up to dispatch for me. The limited power of attorney is me, the carrier, giving you permission to fill out my broker agreements, my broker carrier agreements, and to fill out my rate confirmations on my behalf, on behalf of the carrier. You are representing me, so I'm giving you limited power of attorney to do that. Why am I doing that? Because it makes the process of booking that load quicker. So if I was a dispatcher and I didn't have this whole clause in here, and I was to send every um, broker carrier agreement to the carrier to fill out and get it back to me, you know how long that would take? that load would get moved to another person. I would never book a load because it's gonna take a long time. You don't know where your carrier is. They could be driving, they could be at a loading dock getting loaded and unloaded. They may not have time to do it themselves. And, and what's the point of having a dispatcher if you're not gonna assist in some way, shape or form, right? So this is the limited power of attorney. It's just essentially saying, hey, I'm the carrier. I give you authorization to fill out fill this out on my behalf. And then you can either have it signed by a witness to, ex to, to add icing on the cake to substantiate it, or you can have it notarized, one or the other. Notar having it notarized is not a requirement. It is a bonus. You can have it notarized, but you do not have to. I have people asking me that question. Okay, some people are calling in. This happens every time, but that's fine. All right. So this is the dispatch agreement. People are still letting in. Abdullah, Faust. Okay. So dispatch agreement. Okay. What do you charge for your service? What What is your worth? What is your worth as a dispatcher? Do you charge a flat rate between three and six hundred dollars a week, or do you charge a percentage? Because you have an option. And the percentage range is between five and 10%, depending on the, the experience of the dispatcher. If you are a beginner dispatcher, I would say between five and seven. If you've got a little bit of experience between eight and 10. So most people will say, okay, with that being said, let me just meet them in the middle and just say seven. I'm safe. I'm safe with saying 7% starting off because I'm not too green and I'm not too advanced. I'm kind of in the middle starting out, 7%. That's a fair amount but the range is between five and 10. That's the going percentages. Anything past 10%, you're greedy. I'm gonna be honest. Anything past 10%, you're charging a carrier to dispatch for them, you're greedy, okay? And then the flat rate, if you're gonna charge a flat rate um, between 300 and 600 a week. And let me give you an example to kind of bring home the point. Let's say you got two carriers, okay? You got two carriers irregardless of what their equipment type is, dry van, flatbed, or reefer. You're finding loads for one of the carriers, you're booking two loads a week for that one, and then you're booking four loads a week for the second carrier. Okay, you guys, you follow me? One carrier, you're booking two loads a week, the other one, you're four loads a week. Which one does it make sense to charge a percentage to? Anyone could answer that question. Uh, Bruno, you raised your hand, so I don't know. If you... I, I would say uh, the, the the four that that you're you're gaining uh, for four loads for. Correct. Can you hear me? Correct. I can hear you. Yeah. So yeah, if you charge a percentage to the one that you're doing more loads for, you're you're making more money for your dispatching company. If you were if you were charging a percentage to the one you did two loads for. You're hustling backwards. You're doing it the wrong way, right? So that that makes so you decide as a company, as a business, starting out. How do you want to structure your company? Do you anticipate beginning having a lot of booking a lot of loads for a carrier? And even if you start off with a flat rate in the beginning, there's nothing that says you don't you can't switch to a percentage later on. Nothing. This is your company. 
you can structure it however you see fit. Let's say you start off with a flat rate with this carrier, but then you get good at that and you pick up another carrier and you're starting to move five or six loads a week for that carrier, then charge a percentage to that one. You can honor this one by keeping it a flat rate, just you know, as a as an honor system to that person. Say, hey, I'm gonna honor the flat rate with you because you were my first carrier. You gave me my first chance. So I'm gonna honor a flat rate with you. I got a couple more carriers. I'm gonna charge a percentage to them because I'm starting to pick up this dispatching thing. I'm starting to understand it, right? So that's how that works. Um. So you charge that, and then everything else you just fill it out and sign. The carrier is going to sign everything and go from there, okay? So that's the dispatcher agreement. This is the initial document, the contract that you sent to the carrier in PDF format. You edit it, you edit this in Word format. And, and if you are a member of this portal, this platform, you can download the Word version to your, to your local computer, edit it for your stuff. If you have a logo, fill it out, change it save it as a Word document and then resave it as a PDF to send to the carrier. Do not send the new dispatch agreement in Word format to the carrier. Always send it in PDF format, okay? Why? Because if you send it in Word format, they can simply edit the numbers and edit everything, right? Send it in PDF format, okay? All right, the next, the second of the two important documents that you need as a dispatching uh, person or uh, company is the, the carrier profile. This is also, you send this to the, um, the uh, carrier also. Before I move to the profile, are there any questions about the dispatcher agreement? No questions? I'm right, just making sure. All right, so the profile, the profile people are in, they're just telling me they're in, they're in, they're in, they're in, are you in training now? Yes, that's the curriculum I'm following. Okay, so the, okay, Royal Dispatch has their hand raised. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, so on, on the, do you think that that's a good idea to have on your webpage or once you have your conversation with them and everything goes well, then you send it to them in an email? So it's, it could be a good idea to have it on your website that you send them a link, because I have it on here as, a, as an example for you guys. So let's go to my website. So under carrier services, I have, I just created a generic one just to give you an idea that it can be done just to show you. So under carrier services, I have a, an online form dispatch agreement and an online form profile. The website that I'm using is built on the Wix.com platform, okay? I installed a plugin or an app from the Wix.com marketplace store called Epic Form Builder. So if anybody's using Wix, you can go to their Wix market, go to the forms, type in forms and choose the form that you want. I typed in one called Epic Form Builder. So I'm gonna click, um, okay, this is my carrier services. I'm gonna click Dispatcher Agreement. So when I installed in my website's back office, the application for the form, I had to edit and create the form and then put the fields in there and then attach it to an email to my business email. So when the carrier, I can send the link to the site to the carrier, they fill it out, they put their information in there and they fill it out and then they hit send. Got it. Yeah, I have it on my website, but I was wondering whether or not that was um, a good idea. So it was my idea to put it's, it on it's there. A, it's a great idea because it streamlines the process for you and it reduces the wait time that you're gonna be waiting for a carrier to fill out a dispatch agreement and return it um, to you. It, it reduces the follow-up time that you need to take uh, versus sending out a dispatch agreement as an attachment PDF to an email and waiting for the carrier to send it back to you. If you have a web form, you send them a link, they can click the link, fill it out while they're at a truck stop waiting to get loaded, waiting to get offloaded at a, a shipper or receiver, click send and it's back to you. 
in the form of an email and that's your dispatch agreement and your profile. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have it set up that way. I just was wondering, I wanted your professional opinion. It's, it, that's, that's the fastest, that's the more professional way to do it. But again, some people may not have the website yet. So for those who don't have a web presence yet, then the, the only way to do it is to send it out as a PDF attached to an email and, and then do a follow-up with the carrier, maybe one or two follow-ups. I recommend if you're going to go that route, do one, two follow-ups at the most spread about two days apart. After two follow-ups, you don't hear from that carrier, I would move on. I'm not going to waste too much time chasing down one carrier for a dispatch agreement where there are other carriers out there who could be needing my service. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of them. I, I, the reason why I was asking, because it's a lot of them, they, they, they act like they don't know what that is. Like, they, 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 it's like that scares them off. Like, oh, what do you mean agreement? Like, you're going to dispatch a load for me or not? Like, what do, you, what do you mean sign, you know? So I don't know if they're rookies in the game that I'm running into or? Well, if, and, it, and it depends on how you rebut that, that, how you respond to that. What do you mean agreement? Well, I mean agreement because I'm finding a, this is a service I provide as a, as a dispatching company. We have to have a, a formal agreement in place for, so I can get compensated for providing that service. I just can't provide the service and then I won't be a business loan. I can't do that for free. I'm providing a service just like you're providing a service, Mr. Carrier. You are hauling freight for a broker from a shipper to a receiver. Uh, do you not have an agreement with the broker? Did you not fill out a freight a, a broker carrier agreement? And he's going he's going to say he or she's going to say, oh yeah, of course I did. How else am I going to get paid? Ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I do. I do have that rebuttal, not verbatim, word for word, but it's similar. Yeah. But but that's lot. exactly what I would say to them. I would I would I would just reverse the role. I'm like, okay, yeah. Are you are nah, you they just wasting time because they want they they just want they, I just want you to find me a load. So it's like a one and done. So right yeah so I, I was i would just say are you are you moving that load that you got are you currently under a load yes are you moving that for free no i'm not of course not okay well then did you have to fill out an agreement in order to get the load so you can get paid so it can show did you sign some kind of rate confirmation so uh uh, uh verifying that once you deliver that load you, you you're you're obligated to get paid of course i did why are you asking me this well you just asked me the same question but you asked it in a different way I have an agreement between you and I. I'm providing a dispatching service. You sign the agreement. Once I find your load, the agreement states that now you compensate me for the terms of the agreement. It's as simple as that. So thanks, Charles. Yep. Uh, Melinda has her hand up. Hey, Nikki Daniels. <laughs> yes, Mr. Charles. How you doing? This yes, is I'm Arnold good. under under Melinda's account. Yeah, I'm, um, looking, I'm looking for you. Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. but let me pull my camera. I didn't have my camera. Up. I'm up now. But That's fine. Um, yeah, so um, I just wanted to touch base real quick. We when we ha when we were in the meeting on Wednesday this past Wednesday. Okay. Um, someone at the end of the meeting brought up some um qu some questions about, and I think you said we were we were going to get you were going to get together with him and and talk about that today. Um, do you remember what I'm talking about with the um? Having everything lined up in order with our paperwork and our register and, and everything um, registered in a certain order, the guy, the gentleman was talking about. Yeah, you're talking about Jay, and I think Jay, Jay and I haven't had a chance to speak, and we're probably going to uh, schedule it a little bit later because we haven't had a chance to formally discuss it. Because when we do present it to you, we want to have it in an organized fashion. But he was referring to like business credit and things like that. Yeah, business credit. Yeah, uh, he said a couple other things that just threw me off because I wanted to go ahead and start getting rocking and rolling, but I didn't want to make a move if the things are not in order the way he was saying that they should be. You know what I mean? I didn't want to. Yeah. I mean, if Jay is in here and if you like, you could probably set up a one on one. You and you and him can discuss that if you feel you need to uh, uh, go there. Actually, I, I'm here. If you, if you have a quick minute, I, I would like I would prefer if. Uh, to meet with Charles first, that way Charles can get a better understanding of the program that I'm talking about. I'd really like Charles to see a preview because it's not, uh, it's really impolite for him to recommend something without knowing firsthand what it is. So I'd like him a thorough, thorough understanding of the course and what it is. And uh, after that, then uh, I'd like everything to go through Charles's channel. That way uh, 
everything's you know straight and in order. I don't I don't want anybody to I, I try you. to do any one on one consultations or anything at this point. I, I I'm doing a lot of consultations right now, and I'd rather keep everything focused on the course. So everything's just pending a meeting with Charles at this point right now. Okay, fair fair enough. I understood. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything before I make any moves and be jammed up in any type of way. Okay, so we're gonna so so Jay and I will get together and we'll. Um, Jay's gonna present it to me and then we'll, we'll come up with an, um, a, a best use case of how to present it to the group overall. Probably do one, maybe maybe multiple trainings consecutively if, it, if, it's, that, if it's that big and it, it requires that and that'll be good. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll call it business credit and present it to you guys. So, all right, thanks Jay. Thanks. Uh, Beautiful. Hey, Charles, Thank you. Is that gonna be today? That's not going to be today because I haven't even, Jay and I have not even had the discussion yet. Okay. Okay, so we have to have when so when it will when it does happen, I will announce it on our social media platforms that you guys should have connections to. So on our website, we have you can connect to me on Facebook in our Dispatcher One Hundred and One. You can connect to me through Instagram. Through uh, matter of fact, let me show you. What are you talking about? Different. Um, well, well, Charles is looking that up. I, I would like to mention one thing. I plan to launch the. Uh, unmute yourself, Jay. I apologize. I thought I did. Uh, just a heads up. I, I plan on launching the course in July. The first, the first group of students will be in July, uh, but it will only be launched through through Exodus Logistics. I'm not I'm not putting any affiliate links on any other websites or anything like that. So any information will be coming down from Charles as far as the course and and what it is. It is going to be super affordable. Don't I mean it's super super cheap. Like. We're talking like 25 bucks a week, you know, it's super cheap, but, and it's only an eight week course. So uh, more will come down through Charles' channel should he approve of the program. But like I said, I, I'd like him to have a thorough understanding of it before he even tries to present it. Sign me up. Fair enough, that's fair enough. Okay, so if you can connect with us guys, I mainly make the announcement like whether a class is canceled or not in, in the Facebook groups, Dispatcher 101. Excellence Logistics Learning Center and things like that, but you can connect to us through YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. So, so when we, when Jay and I have the conversation and it comes out, what we're going to do and how to present it, it'll be announced not only in our trainings, but it'll be announced through the social media platform. So you'll have multiple ways to hear about it. Okay. All right. So um, the next document for the beginner students. So we have the two main documents: the dispatcher agreement. The second one is the carrier profile. So this is what you also send to your your potential client that's going that you're going to be dispatching for. What all the carrier profile is is that you are telling me you're sending me this form. I'm the I'm the truck driver. I'm the carrier. I'm telling you how I want you to find loads for me. I'm telling you how much I want, where I want to go, how much weight I want to haul what equipment type I have, and you can add and take away from this template as you see fit for your company. You're not limited to this design format of this profile. You can add and take away from it. There are some points on here that's important though. Like you wanna know, any profile you wanna know of a carrier, you wanna know what their equipment type is. You wanna know how much weight they wanna haul. You wanna know where they wanna go. You wanna know where they don't wanna go. So you can keep them out of the areas they, because carriers know the good areas from the bad areas, especially the experienced ones. They know where to stay away from or what to stay away from. You want to know what their cents per mile, how much they want to get paid, what's the minimum they'll take before they even get in their truck and start it and move it to pick a load up, right? Whether they want to go in the mountains, whether they want to go in the tolls, things like that, how much weight they want to haul, other comments, right? You want to know if they have any brokers that they've already been working with, if they're already set up with certain brokers. That helps you as a dispatcher because now that eliminates you having to fill out the broker carrier agreement because your carrier is not new to that brokerage. They already work with that broker. They're already set up with that broker. So that eliminates that. So they list some Coyote, uh, TQL, CH Robinson, whoever. You can look at loads from those particular brokers and call those brokers and say, hey, man, I got a carrier who's already set up with you. We're looking at a load right here. We're interested in that load, you know, and all you have to do now is just finish the process, okay? So we got, so the, 
So the three, the three major equipment types, dry van, flatbed, and reefers, the two documents you guys need for, for your dispatching company starting out, the dispatch agreement and the profile. So you're gonna send this to the carrier. The carrier is gonna fill these documents out, return them to you. In the email, you may want to mention that you also need copies. Let me repeat, copies of the carrier's credentials, okay? The car what are the carrier's credentials and why do you need those copies? The carrier's credentials are, let's go to our forms and documents page, okay? And scroll down here where it says other booking documents. I was speaking to someone on the phone today and they were going through the process of what they have set up and I was letting them know, you know, where they are and what they need. So when you send out the dispatch agreement and profile, the carrier sends that back, those two documents back, along with copies of their MC authority, W-9, certificate of insurance, and notice of assignment if they have a factoring company, okay? So let me explain why. These documents, carriers already have in their possession. They can send you copies of these because they already have them in their possession. Someone was asking the question, well, do I need to produce these documents or create them for the carrier? No, you do not. Carriers already have a copy of their MC authority letter. If they do not, they shouldn't be driving on the road. They, they are an MC authority letter is issued to the carrier by the FMCSA and DOT. It gives them authorization to haul freight either as an interstate carrier or an intrastate carrier. Someone tell me the difference between the two. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, intrastate is uh, the, the state that they're from, and interstate is all states. There you go. Very good. And Bruno, you just came on, right? Uh, well, uh, yeah, today's my, my first day on, but uh, but I've been looking at your YouTube videos and uh, brushing up. I used to do some of this stuff back in the 2000s. And, uh, and you know, like I said, when I caught on to your video, I started uh, – Noticing, I, I used to do some of the stuff. It's just been a lot more updated. Yeah, uh, with the computer. You know, back then it was cell phone and, and notebook paper and a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Co correct. A whole book. Yep. So you have you have an advantage now. So, so intrastate, as Bruno said, intrastate is the domicile state that the carrier lives in. They can only haul freight within that state like for example texas you can make a living in texas though because texas is a, is a huge state right so and then interstate is you cross state lines you can go pretty much touch we used to call it touch 48 touch all 48 states right um keisha had her hand raised keisha b if you can unmute yourself please Um, I wanted to ask before you go into this, what was the four, the questions you said to ask the um the carriers? And it was a couple of questions. I got how much weight can you carry? Oh, oh, oh. yeah, on the profile. Yeah. So if you're creating a profile, some of the common questions you would put on the profile so they can fill out so you can be more informed because you're going to use as a dispatcher, guys, you're going to use the profile. You're going to cater your load search according to what the carrier tells you on their profile. So they're going to check the box like equipment number, number and type of truck. Okay, I may have a 53 foot van. I may have three of them. Um, how much weight do I want to haul? And I need to add that because I don't see it on here. Weight, right? So on this profile, I got carrier general information section, just their, their physical address and their mailing address. That's fine. Just contact information, basic stuff, emergency contact and phone. Their equipment type, uh, somewhere on here needs to be something that says uh, how much weight they want to haul. So for each equipment type, there's different weight maximums and minimum or maximums um, for a, uh, a dry van equipment type and a reefer equipment type. Most carriers want to haul like 40,000 pounds. The max weight is about 44 or 45,000. But you're going to rarely find carriers who haul their trailers at maximum weight. Why? Because 
they, unless they're being paid good money for it, it burns a lot of fuel and, and fuel costs. So most carriers are not gonna wanna haul at max weight. Um, and then also the, the uh, 48 or 53 foot flatbeds, those, those weight maximums are 46 to 48,000 pounds. So you got the dry vans and reefers at 45,000 max, the flatbeds are at 46 to 48,000. So that's something that you would put on your um, profile asking the carrier how much weight they wanna haul, where they want to go as far as move loads to where, what lanes, where they want to, where they want to avoid or where they don't want to go. Um, like, do they want to go into the mountains? Most carriers don't want to go into the mountains because of the slopes, the upgrades and downgrades, the five and seven degree upgrades and downgrades. You burn a lot of your um, brakes and stuff. Uh, you burn fuel. And then most carriers don't want to take the tolls because of the cost, the extra cost. So, these are some of the things that you would ask a potential carrier. So put yourself in the mind of a truck driver. If you are familiar with truck drivers, if you know someone who's a truck driver, ask them. That'll help you too to create your, um, your profile. Ask someone, if, if you know someone who's a truck driver, ask them when they're on the road, what do they like? How much weight do they want to haul? Where do they like going? How much money do they want per mile to move that truck, right? Depending on the equipment type, dry vans and reefers might be, may be like, Three dollars a mile, two seventy-five a mile. Flatbeds may be three something a mile. So, these are some of the questions you get that data, that information, and then you formulate a load search for them, and then you come back when you find a load that matches the profile, and then you start talking to the carrier. When you find a load on a load board for your carrier according to the profile, the first thing you do is call that carrier to confirm that they want that load. I had someone a while back told me they called the broker without sharing it with the carrier, booked the load prior to letting the carrier know, and then call the carrier and say, hey, man, I found you a load. The carrier said, I can't take that load. I'm currently under a load, and I won't deliver it until a few days later. You see, so it's good to communicate between you and the carrier first before you call the broker to book that load. You may find the load, but, you know, someone just asked, what is dry touch? So um, some loads have what's called you touch the freight. You, you as, as driver assist or you touch the freight. Most cases, drivers are going to say no. Most drivers do not want to touch that freight. They're going to sit in their truck, in their, in their sleeper, watching TV on the phone, relaxing while the truck is shaking because there are forklifts going in and out of the truck, loading and unloading the truck. So that's, that's a no-touch freight um, type of load. In most cases, most loads you're going to book is going to be no touch freight. If it's a driver touch freight or driver assist type load, then you negotiate for more money because that's labor. The driver should not have to touch the freight. Okay. So, and Bruno is shaking his head. So Bruno, were you a truck driver? I'm still ill. <laughs> okay. What equipment type are you driving? I, I drive a bobtail tanker right now. A bobtail tanker. Okay. So yeah, you I've done it all. Yeah, so you've done it all. Okay, so there you go. So yeah, so so if there's no if it's if the if the load is on the load board and it says driver assist or driver touch, then you you can leverage that with the broker to try to get some more money for your driver. If your driver even wants that load, the driver's gonna say, Well, you know, is it a full truck load? Is it 53 feet trailer, 26 pallets, four by four, 48 by 48 pallets? Um, is it a half a truck load? Is it LTL? How much labor am I doing to kind of determine how much extra you're going to charge to that broker for that load? So, all right. So this is the profile. So we got the dispatch agreement and the profile. We got the other documents I was explaining on the website that you have the carrier send back. Okay. Uh, Charles, can you go over MC and DOT? The definitions are so similar. Uh, I'm confused, which is interstate and multiple states. So if you have just a DOT, then you're operating in intrastate. You're operating only in that state. If you have a motor carrier authority, you can cross state lines. Interstate, okay? That's just, that's the short version. That's the easy definition. I can give the technical term, but that's the easy definition. Okay, Bruno. Hey, Charles. Hey, uh, 
if a truck's only running a DOT number, can they still pull loads with just that DOT number? Uh, you know, if the broker says uh, it'll be okay. In, 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 in trust state, you can run loads in trust state. You can't cross state lines. You shouldn't be able to cross state lines. Right, right. But what I'm saying is he doesn't actually have to have an MC number. I've seen, I haven't seen a carrier that didn't have an MC number yet, but if you just got a DOT number, then you're just operating within your state. Okay. okay. Um, Nikki Daniel, I see your hand raised. And then I thought Keisha B had her. Keisha, did I skip somebody? Oh, did Keisha, did I miss Keisha B? I'm sorry, did I miss you? Or did, did I answer the question for Keisha? Just want to make sure. Okay, she said I got her. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my question is with that form. Um, I noticed you said that when um, on the carrier um, form, if they had more than one truck, so for each, for each, yeah, uh, where it said um, the equipment types, yeah. Do we need to have one of these for each truck that they have? I mean, do they have to fill out one of these uh, applications for every every truck? No. So if 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 it's more than one truck, chances are, um, yes, Brandy, you will be able to view this later. This is recorded. Um, if it's more than one truck, chances are it is a trucking company, a fleet, a fleet of trucks. So then you would put the dispatch agreement on the company itself under the umbrella of the company and then whatever trucks that that you dispatch loads for it's covered under the umbrella of the trucking company irregardless of the number of trucks right because you're, you're dispatching for the company so the company may have five trucks so whichever truck you find a load for it's covered under the company itself okay all right And let me see who else got their hands up. Uh, Royal, you got another question, Royal Dispatch? Ali? Yeah, I just wanted to touch on that um, that DOT number. Remember you and I discussed that and um, we were supposed to research that. And because um, the company that I, um, the fleet manager for, we ran our trucks out of state. We only had a US DOT number, got pulled over on the scale, everything. Um, so so did you run out of state within, did you cross state lines within a 150 mile radius or beyond? Or oh, within yeah. oh yeah, 100%. Okay. Um, but so I'm just trying to um, jot your memory. So I believe we concluded they we were able to do it because we only haul for us. Right. Right. So, so, so Bruno I just wanted was asking, to answer that question for the person in the group. Right. So Bruno was asking about brokers, like brokering loads for not just you, but just for all brokers, different type of loads. So gotcha. if you're doing it internally for yourself, it, there may be a different beast involved with that. Right. Okay. All right. Ali. Yes, Charles, I have two questions. The first one is, I was watching an older video from April, um, and this lady mentioned the RMIS system. Okay. Then you went through it with her explaining about it, which caught me off guard because I'm expecting to fill out these forms, you know? So this was completely new to me. So I just wanted to know if you can elaborate more on it, just okay. to make sure I understood correctly. Certainly. Certainly. So what the, R the RMIS is it's registry monitoring insurance service what it is is it's an onboarding software that brokerages are using to send like links to carriers to fill out quickly as opposed to sending the broker carrier agreement and the rate confirmation in a pdf format via email most we use that are, charles you use rmis yeah we use that yeah so so this is Ariel, guys Ariel is a broker so it is an integration software that you can send out the dispatch, I mean, uh, the broker carry agreements and the rate confirmations, you know, send them a link and they can just type in their MC or DOT number and then it populates with the information because a lot of the data is a matter of public record. If you, if you type in an, an MC and DOT number, that's public record, what the information about the carrier. 
right? It's super, it's super, super easy, man. If you if you really have their W nine and all the information is updated, it'll take you like for real, for real, maybe ten minutes, if that. Honestly, that's that's long. If you only if you probably never seen it before, but it really, if their information is correct, it, it's it's gonna match it match everything. All right. Uh, the IRS is it's a breeze. Yeah. So there you go. So that's Ariel. Ariel just gave us his take. And Ariel's a broker. He's a freight broker. Okay, so that's the RMIS system. Registry monitor. That one. Oh, wait. Is, go ahead. So it could be either or. It could be either through the RMIS system or we could uh, fill out the broker carrier. Just depends. Right, it depends on the broker. So it 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 would be right. it would be easier for you if a broker had an RMIS system or another type of onboarding system, uh, my carrier packets or whichever. There's several of them out there that they'll just send you a link, and then your carrier or you, since you're dispatching for them, you just type in your carrier's um, MC or DOT number, and it pops up instantly. You just fill in a few pieces of information and hit submit, as opposed to which would you prefer, that or a broker sends you a, an 18-page or a 10-page broker carrier agreement, yeah. you fill that out and then you send that back via uh, PDF or DocuSign or what have you, PDF filler, DocHub, and then they do the same exact thing with the rate confirmation. So would you rather have a more integrated, more technologically advanced software that does it for you quicker or, but most brokers, well, I don't say most, a lot of brokers are, not yet at that point where they're using RMIS. There, some brokers are still sending paper, PDF, attached to an email, uh, broker carrier agreements, and rate confirmations. So if you come across one that's using RMIS or my carrier packets or whatever onboarding software, you should jump up and, and thank God because <laughs> it's going to be an easier process for you, <laughs> you know? So, right. But I still have to send the forms, right? The other forms, the W nine, the uh, you do, you do with the software. You can upload them through the software. Yeah, you just upload it. So for for us, how it works is if you're gonna take the load, we send you like a link, um, through via email, and that link is gonna allow you to actually get onto RMIS. And once you get on there, you just you just fill in the information, you upload whatever documents that you need. Um, I know maybe for like the W nine portion, you might have to fill it out, but it's, I mean, it's it's literally just like a like a filler. You name, add it, EIN number, sign. It's it's really really quick. You once you get it, and then once you update it into RMIS. I mean, if you've done it once before, the next time you do it is 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 going to be even faster. Maybe the first time you look at it, it might take a little longer because you just kind of reading through what's going on, but Outside of that, it's going to be a, a, a fairly easy process. And now, as far as I, I don't know what other, any other carrier package agreements, I've always only used RMIS, so I, I couldn't even imagine what it's like that to fill out the actual paperwork by hand. I, I could see that being a pain. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, the answers. And okay. one more thing. I don't know if you still do this or not, but since I signed up, which was like two weeks ago or something, I haven't had the privilege to hear and see you do some cold calling. Okay. So just, I was just wondering if you could maybe do that um, so we could hear you on okay. both sides, like calling a broker and a carrier, just so we could see how, you know. Okay, yeah, I, I can say it's probably gonna have to be on a Saturday. It's gonna be hard doing it at six o'clock at night because most brokers, well, if I call a West Coast broker, probably to try to book a load for a carrier. Calling carriers is not the problem, but calling the broker side probably be, on Wednesday nights, I would probably have to call a, a broker that's on the West Coast because I'm on the East Coast, so that's a three hour time difference. So they're still open, right? And right. So that's not a problem. But yeah, that's not a problem. Calling the broker, okay. trying to book a load, discussing the rates and everything. We can do it live, yeah. we can do it mock, you know, however you want. That's not a problem whatsoever. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Um, Anderson Luke. Hello, Charles, and everyone that's signed in. Uh, my question is backing up a few notches where you were saying if you have a load that's a no touch load, 
Is that the situation where you're saying you need documentation to give to the receiver, saying that it's no touch and that there would be compensation to the receiver for their employees to pull that load off the truck? No, that's called a lumper. What you're referring to is a lumper. The standard loads are no touch freight for the carrier. If the carrier never gets out of his truck, he pulls it to a loading dock at a shipper to pick a load up to get loaded and, and go to the receiver to deliver it, and he doesn't do anything, that's, that's a standard no-touch load. If the facility is charging extra of an extra fee to load or unload that truck, that's called what's called a lumper. And that could be either included in the rate or the carrier may have to pay an extra fee and then invoice the broker later on to get reimbursed for that service. Okay, and if the carrier has to pay that extra fee, is there any way to avoid him having to pay that extra fee? Or that's standard practice and he just has to be waited. He if, just has to wait if, to be it's a, if it's a load that you get from a broker that's posted and, the, and then the broker tells you that on the rate confirmation or however, that there's a lumper involved in this load, do you still want it? And then, and then you tell your carrier that and the carrier says, well, how is it going to be paid for? And the broker says, okay, well, um, you may have to pay it and then just reimburse, just give us an invoice and then we'll reimburse you. If you agree to all that, then you are already, your carrier and you are aware of the, of the process at that point. But if you get to a facility and you get a brokered load, you get to a facility and you wasn't aware that there was a lumper on the load and the broker neglected to share that with you, then you would say, okay, well, I need to call this broker and either get a, um, a, a T code for this, pay it with a credit or debit card, get a receipt and invoice at that point. But in any case, well, go ahead. No, I was saying I understand now. Thanks for the clarity. Okay. Um, let's see who else has their hand. Uh, uh, Gregory. Yes, sir. How you doing? Yes, sir. All right. Um, uh, good, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm inquiring about the RMIS system. Is that something that you need to subscribe to as a as a dispatcher? No, this is nothing. The RMIS system is totally on the broker side. There's nothing to do with this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to be sure. I just want to be sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Royal dispatching. I'm sorry, y'all. I forgot to put my hand down. I, okay. We already no talked about. It. Okay. No problem. Okay. So, hey, what's up, Gino? Um. So we were in the other document section before we went off on the questions, right? So the other documents that the carrier is going to send back to you are copies of their MC authority, right? Which shows that they have the authorization to move freight all over the country. That's what an MC authority does. And it's issued by the FMCSA and DOT, okay? A copy of their W-9, okay? The W-9 shows that they have an EIN number attached to their business, that they are a business. They, they're in place as a business. ABC Trucking with EIN number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or whatever, right? That's the second document that they need to send to you as a dispatching company from the carrier, okay? And the, the third document is a certificate of insurance. Every carrier cannot haul freight. They can't move that truck, let alone haul freight, unless they have insurance uh, to do so, right? So most minimum required insurance uh, categories on the, on the policy, there is a uh, $100,000 cargo coverage that they have to have and either a $750,000 or a $1 million liability coverage, which covers BI and PD. BI is bodily injury, PD is property damage. Those two together makes up the concept of what's called liability insurance, okay? So, and so every carrier has to have insurance, they have to have a W-9, they have to have a MC authority letter, right? When they, when you, when they send that back to you. Now the fourth document, if your carrier has a factory company, they, they need to send you a copy of a form that you're going to send to the broker. That's called a notice of assignment form, an NOA, okay? And this is just an example of what one looks like.
but on the website, it's right here too, okay? Notice of assignment. All a notice of assignment is, is the factoring company running a credit check on the broker to make sure that that, care, that brokerage is a factorable entity in order to pay the factory company so that the carrier can get paid, okay? So these are the documents that need to be returned to you by the carrier along with the dispatcher agreement and profile, okay? So let's, let's dispatch a load real quick. Let's go to a load board and dispatch a load, okay? And let's go to module two load boards. And before I do that, let's go to, because I was in the freight broker training and Mr. Nelson, I think he's in here also. Um, and let's go to direct freight. Let's look at direct freight services. Let's see how many loads are out here. And let me log into direct freight services. and see so i want to get while i'm doing this i want somebody to give me an equipment type and give me where they are located and we can kind of piggyback off of florida reaper i knew it i knew it <laughs> so are you northern florida like jacksonville tallahassee are you central florida are you Southern Florida. Someone said flatbed Atlanta. I'm going to go to load map real quick and see the number of loads. That's a nice girl. So look at all these loads all over the country, right? The number of loads across the equipment types. So this load map, available loads, kind of give you an idea of where to send carriers based off of the number of loads. Look at Texas, greater than 10,000 loads. Now this is across all the equipment types, right? Drive in. Right. I-40 East, right. and keep right. So, let me mute. So all the loads all across the state, you can send, so you got Florida got 4,570 loads, Georgia got 7,000, close to 7,800. Texas is 10,000. So all these different loads all over the place, right? There's only 514 loads in Nevada. So I'm not sending nobody to Nevada that much, right? 83 loads in Delaware. And then Rhode Island, 23 loads, you know? So, so you get the point, right? You, you want to send your, as a dispatcher, when you're sending your carriers all over the country, you want to put them in areas and in states that has a high volume of inbound and outbound movement of loads. That way you increase the likelihood of finding freight for them and keeping them running, right? So you wanna, you wanna master that art at some point, right? Hey, Charles. Yeah. Hey, try out, like, I have a lot of problems. I can barely hear you, Joel. You can try McAllen, Texas. Oh, you must be stuck over there, McAllen. Yeah, no, I'm from there. They have a lot of produce. I-40. Okay. Yeah, because of the border. And then what, what, so reefer? Yes, sir, reefer. Okay, so. McAllen, Texas, right? That's what Joel just said, McAllen, Texas. I'm gonna put radius. So the radius is what's called, also called, another name for radius is called deadhead. What does that mean? Deadhead means that, okay, how far empty am I willing to drive my truck from where I'm currently at to pick a load up wherever it's posted at? So in this case, we have a load in coming out of McAllen, Texas. So I may be, let's say, 100, 100 miles or less. I may be sitting somewhere within a 100-mile radius or less, and I'm willing to drive empty from wherever I'm at to pick this load up from the shipper in McAllen, Texas. So when you're driving somewhere where you are empty to where you need to go to pick a load up, that's called deadheading, okay? Just so you guys will know. And the standard radius is 100. We can say 50, you can say 75, but I'll just put it standard 100. I'm gonna leave the destination empty, which means I'm willing to pick a load up in McAllen, Texas, going anywhere. 
if I was to put something in there, a city and state, that means I'm I'm going to pick up from McAllen, Texas, and go to that specific city and state. I don't want to do that because I don't want to limit myself to just lanes or loads going from there to there. I want to pick up in McAllen and go anywhere. So I want to see all the loads available coming out of McAllen, Texas, going anywhere. So I'll see what the loads are, what they're paying, and things like that. Okay. You guys understand that part? Yes. Okay. I've got a question for you, Charles. Yes, go ahead. Someone asked it for the okay. Zoom. Oh. Uh, my, question, my question is really simple. Um, I, I, my, uh, my carrier that I have uh, decided to jump the gun before I even have my uh, my paperwork ready. And he said, are you ready to start dispatching because I'm ready to start using you now? Which is supposed to be good. I shouldn't be complaining about that. But I said, sure, let's do this. And I went ahead and registered my own uh, account with um, uh, a couple of load boards. And because I don't want to get kicked out, you know, when I, you know, time crunch, right? I don't want to get kicked out. Anyway, my question is, I found a, a load and suddenly I realized I'm leaving him stuck, you know, 400 miles from his home. And I thought, wait a minute, I can't just get him a load. So the whole thing, I'm, I'm guessing, we haven't really, this might be a more advanced question, but it's kind of like you have to play it back in reverse, doesn't it seem? I mean, I, I don't want to send him somewhere if I can't get him a backhaul, you know? Exactly. So I have to like, I have to go three steps ahead all the time. Is that is that typical or am I overthinking it? No, no, not three, at least two, if not three, but at least two, right? You wanna, um, you wanna do that. So if I were you, I would use one, two, three. Matter of fact, let's go to one, two, three low boards. We can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Let's yes, sir. go to one, two, three low board and look for a load on there because one, two, three low board has an excellent backhaul feature tab on there. And we can utilize that as a teaching tool while we're doing this basic training as well. So this is also another load board, guys. Okay. So let's minimize that. So let's find loads. So <laughs> um So where where so where where is that load picking up, Jay? Uh, in Northwest Ohio, and then he's taking it down to uh, Dallas. So Northwest, like Toledo. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lima, Lima, Lima. Western Ohio, I guess you could say. And we'll say a hundred, and he he's taking it to the state of Dallas, uh, the state of Texas. Correct. Okay. I'm going to say that to state. So with one, two, three, low board, you can look up, you can search by city and state specifically, or just the state itself or multiple states. And you can deliver to a specific city, specific states and multiple states or anywhere within the U S and Canada. Okay. Jay gave me a more granular and specific information about his carrier. He's picking up in Ohio and he's delivering to somewhere in Texas. So I'm going to say Texas. What's the equipment type of this carrier, Jay? A reefer. It's a reefer. It's a reefer. Okay. I'm going to hit search. So I see uh, some loads here. None of them are posted with a rate. Well, this one is 2,500. So Fairborn, Fairfield, Ohio, Lima to Selma, Texas. So is is one of these loads one of the ones that you oh no i'm sorry i i can be more specific if you look for the exact load it's actually it's we uh, he's leaving from lima his, his truck is in lima he's uh actually going to be picking up the load i think it's sydney uh either sydney or somewhere near dayton uh sydney and then it goes down to dallas okay so what so, i'll do so is so this is what i'll do to help i'm going to say the state of ohio we're going to pick it up to the state of texas and then we'll see if it, it pops in there. Okay, so Sydney, Ohio. So if you have you booked the load yet? Because if you booked it, the broker may have taken it down. 
no, no, not this one has not been booked yet. I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the carrier's expectations. Uh, I, I, I did book a load, but not this one. I, you know, I did uh, a, what a power only for the guy, and, okay. and that one's running tonight. But you know, he said that he has another driver that's ready to put some miles on and uh, with the reefer. And I said, sure. You know, and he asked me to find him a couple of loads, tie up the you know, book the guy's week out. And I thought, well, Ohio to Texas, that that's a few days, you know? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the, the, the main question I had is once he's in Texas, then, you know, there was another high paying load from El Paso back to, uh, I think Cleveland. So it puts him back home, you know, long, long distance. And the both loads were paying over $4,000. And I thought yeah. that's great. Uh, except for the, the deadhead between Dallas and El Paso, which you know, to me, you know, working in the oil field, that don't seem like much, but to a truck driver getting five miles a gallon, it's a big deal, I think, you know, you know, Dallas, Del Paso. Right. But the rate, the rate, obviously I haven't even negotiated with the, with the broker yet. And I'm sure I can negotiate uh, to get a little bit more. Right. Um, you probably you know, could help cover. Him. Yeah. Either help cover the fuel surcharge or find him a short run from Dallas to El Paso to pick that load up in El right. Paso going back to Cleveland. Right, which which complicates it even more. Now we're talking about three loads, so that's what I'm saying. You have to be so many steps ahead of the game before you can even book that first load, or you're going to leave your driver in Timbuktu, you know, with no <laughs> load, you know? <laughs> Welcome to dispatching. But um, but that's the idea, though, yeah. So, so yeah, you want to plan out. You don't want to plan too far out, though, because you don't want to book too far out, because what if you book three loads and then the middle load gets canceled? Now you're stuck with the first load and the third load, and you gotta, you're scrambling to find a load to compensate for that middle load that got canceled. So you want to be, you still want to, you want to be proactive, but you also want to be careful at the same time, right? Hey, let right. me let me ask the question real quick, Charles. Not interrupt you guys. So, um, so like, let's say you do book a load. Would it be would it would it help to go ahead and at least like? start like scamming load boards to to see what's out there for like a a, a bad car or you know so no you because i know sometimes you say wait till like a day or two before i mean that driver gets unloaded or whatnot but to at least see what's out there no so if so let's do let's use jay's case as an example use case so if he booked let's say he booked a load in lima sydney or northwest ohio wherever it was and then he sent this driver to Texas, like Dallas, right? The moment that driver picks that load up and going to Texas, you know when he's going to deliver. You, you have a pretty good idea. The driver's going to tell you, I'm going to take like two or three days or whatever to deliver. You should be looking for the load down there within a certain radius to find for that driver while they're traveling, transporting the freight to that receiver, right? I got you. You, you, you know, it probably it, it's probably kind of too late. Well, I won't say too late, but it's probably not a good idea to start looking for a load once the driver hits the receiver on that. Oh yeah, load. you see what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. De de definitely not that. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. Because I would, I would almost like book like soon he gets loaded in my mind. I would think that I know he's loaded. So if all else fail, all I got to worry about is him not having issues at the receiver. So I can go ahead and start looking for something close to that receiver. You know what I'm saying? Would that that would that make sense? Or should I like you know correct. What I'm so you wanna you wanna be okay. as proactive, but you wanna be like a like a planned or a careful way of being proactive, right? You wanna or next. Right. So in Jay's case, he's picking up in Ohio, he's going to Texas. While that driver is going to Texas, Jay's he's like, okay, well, man, I gotta find him something Either bring so your driver wants to just go from Ohio to Texas and then back to Ohio. He doesn't want to go like anywhere else, Jay, like over to the south, to the southeast, like Georgia somewhere, and then come back up to Ohio. Well, it was no, he did not specify. He, you know, I I just looked at the rate and it was uh the load bad, that the load was like forty eight hundred dollars, which was you know ended up you know is a is a good mileage rate. And he said, yeah, he jump on it. And right. then as soon as the carrier said, yeah, I thought. Well, I got to get back to Ohio now, you know? Right. So ask him. I, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Georgia or, you know, you know, that's an easy trip back to Ohio up by 75. You know, I'm sure he would take that in a heartbeat, you know, I 10 or I 20 over to 75, but I just didn't, you know, I just didn't know how many steps ahead of the game I was supposed to be thinking because 
it suddenly dawned on me that it's not as simple as booking one load. I would say I would say at least two steps ahead of the game. The 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 line haul and at least the back haul, either going back to where they picked up or somewhere else where you can find and load easily going back to the place he picked up. Like for example, Georgia. So I would say at least two steps ahead. Right? All right. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. I would um and then ask him, I mean, I don't know, because you say I don't know if you say you asked him now, but is it only Texas to Ohio and back, or is he willing to go elsewhere that is paying a good rate? He wants the money. He don't care where he goes. Okay, well then that's, that's even why he's going to. That's why he's going to Texas in the first place. Right. So that's even better than I would. I would send him over to somewhere like Georgia Southeast, and then and then with especially with the reefer, he can go from the southeast like in Georgia, and then follow that produce back up to the north to the north because. The reefer season right now is, is pretty good coming that in that northeast corridor from the southeast to the northeast. That produce line is, is good in that in that part of the country. Okay. Okay. I'll throw that by him. I'll look it up and see what I can find. Okay. All right. So um Joel, Joel was in McAllen, Texas. Joel, are you still with us? Yes, sir, I'm still here. Okay. So let's look up yours. Joel is in McAllen, Texas for a re reefer, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Reefer. And your driver, your driver wants to go anywhere or what? He's trying to get out of there or what? All right. I'm a company driver. I'm from uh, McAllen. Uh, uh, I'm not dispatching no one currently. I'm just saying that there's a lot of problems coming from the border going to like the Midwest, like Chicago and New York to the east. Yeah. And Philadelphia. So. so here we go. That's a good point, Joe. So here we go. Coming out of McAllen, Texas, going to like New York, Maine. Look at that. $6,800, $6,500. Going 1,990 miles, 44,000. It's a max weight. So Coyote and um, Chop Tank are playing pretty good for that load. So let's look at this. Let's let's do some numbers from a dispatcher's perspective. So let's say I'm I'm um I'm a reefer guy. I'm from McAllen. I have a reefer, and I want three dollars a mile. Okay. And somebody dispatch for me. Somebody give me a percentage that you would dispatch me as a reefer carrier coming out of McAllen, Texas. What's the percentage that you guys would dispatch? Me? Eight percent. Okay, so eight percent. So keep that in mind, guys. So now, let's figure out some numbers from a, from a dispatching from a, what we would go over to the broker concept. Um, okay, uh, Royal said, Charles, how do you equate that to time, the miles to time? So the driver will, as far as drive time and number of days and things like that, the hours of service, the driver will share that with you. And you will ask the driver when you prior to booking the load, hey, man, I found a good load going from, for example, this load here, McAllen, Texas to Sunnyside, New York. Um, do you have enough hours to take that load to pick it up and deliver on time and things like that? Right. And the driver will say, OK, yeah, I got about 20 hours left. I can pick it up do my reset and then finish the load in New York and I'll still have time to make that delivery. On so. Hey Charles, can I get, uh, I see somebody asked about miles and time frame and stuff like that. Um, I might have a little information for them on that one right there. Okay. All right. So when I do mileage, when I'm trying to like determine how many days per mile, I just basically break it down to 600. So, on average, the driver can probably do about about six fifty, seven hundred a day, but I don't I don't really stretch it. I do like six hundred per day. So if it's twelve hundred miles, uh, I'll naturally say that's two days based on the pickup time. Pickup time also is going to determine how many days they're gonna have. Because if it's an early pickup, they still get that that pickup day as a full day because they can get loaded early. And they should still have drive time before you know their ten hours has to reset. But let's say they have they get loaded in the afternoon, three p.m., five p.m. By the time they get loaded, two hours later, it's you know if it was picking up at five, you get loaded two hours later, it's seven o'clock. It's already nighttime, you know. And based on them sitting, 
Um, they might not be able to run as much that day, even though most drivers do prefer to drive at night. Well, most drivers I've spoken with, they like to drive at night because they kind of can bypass tolls and stops and all the other stuff. But I usually determine it based on 600 miles per day. So if it's, if it's over 600 miles, boom, the next day automatically for me. You know, so that way I can kind of give him time to actually get loaded, get unloaded, and I can kind of determine where he needs to go from there. So about between like 600, 650 maybe, but I normally stay at 600 per day. Okay, cool. So with that being said, 600 per day, with this one, is going 1990. You figure three days, that's 1800 right there. So maybe three and a half days for this one. So let's say they picked it up on a Monday, three and a half days, they gotta, they, they'll deliver it on Thursday. And it'll still be an on-time delivery, just to equate the time concept into that, right? They may, they, they may deliver it sooner, but to be fair, as far as time, and we're using 600 miles a day as a baseline, then Thursday would be a good on-time delivery, right? So getting back to the actual dispatching side of this part, McAllen to Sunnyside, New York, let's say, so to figure out the cents per mile, what is the cents per mile for this, right? You're taking the rate that the load is paying and you're dividing it by the loaded miles, right? So what does, what does that equal? Everybody, you could break your calculator out and see 6,500 divided by, what's that, 1,990 miles? That's $3.27 a mile. Does everybody agree with that? Does someone come up with a yeah. different, different number? Yeah, I'm good. Someone said yeah. 297. 297? Yeah, 326. 326.6. So I rounded it up to 327. Okay. So that's how you figure out cents per mile. So if a carrier said, I, I said in my scenario, right, I'm the carrier. I said I wanted at least $3 a mile. So that's good right there, 327. So that's more than what I said I wanted. So it's right now. Oh, he was looking at the wrong load. She was looking at the wrong load, the coyote load. Okay. We're looking at the second one, the second one down, McAllen to Sunnyside, New York. All right, so to figure out cents per mile, you take what the rate is paying and you divide it by the loaded miles, okay? The loaded miles is right here, 1990. What, is, what do I mean when I say loaded miles? Loaded miles is from the time that your carrier picks up that load from the facility in McAllen, Texas, for this example, and deliver it to Sunnyside, New York. That distance is the loaded miles because your carrier's trailer is loaded with freight, okay? Gregory Harris. Yes, sir. Um, I was wondering, do you, since this one from McAllen is going uh, to Sunnyside, New York, do you focus, do you add in the, uh, the tolls going up there? If there are tolls, if there are tolls in there, then you would, you would mention that to the broker as far as having, covering the cost of tolls and things like that. Because the broker, the broker is starting out, they're not going to be concerned about that. They're like, look, do you right. pay 6,500? Do you want it? If you want it, then you're going to cover your own toll expense. If you can get a broker to help cover the tolls, that'd be wonderful. Otherwise, you're going to lose this good load, 6,500, because of the I mean, Yeah, it's a lot of, it's still a lot of money. I was just wondering if they would, would go ahead and pay for that. Because, I mean, going to New York is a, is a headache and a half. Uh, and right. It's so, is, so the question... So is this upstate New York or is it in, is it Sunnyside? Is it in the, is it near tolls or can it, are you, can you go around the tolls? So you would map that. You would, so let's, let's do a map. Let's map that real quick and see. Okay. Hey Charles, I'm not going to lie to you, but um, when my dad was the owner operator, when we had our, our company, sometimes, I'm, I'm going to see a lot of times you go overweight, like probably like, like 90,000. And you bypass all the way stations, but they'll right. pay them nine thousand for for doing that. So yeah, you you get better rates to help compensate going to the tolls. Yeah. So I'm zooming in right now. So yeah, it's on the island. So you're gonna hit. Oh, definitely, you're going through. Yeah, that's two, Queens, New York. Yeah, yeah. So right out, right across from Manhattan. Yep. So I'm zooming in. 
I'm yeah. You can take, you can take whatever right out. there. Yep. There you go. Yeah, Both you're gonna hit about you're gonna hit about five or six toes just oh, getting in the man. Yeah. You got Queens, you got you got Brooklyn. So you yeah, you on the island. You're gonna yeah. So you first yeah, you got are. Manhattan. So yeah. Okay, question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, how do you know there's tolls for us folks that don't drive through New York that often? How do you know there's tolls? Is there is there a map? Is there a website that we can check? You can yeah, check. I think you can do Easy Pass. Yeah, Easy Pass. You can check uh, Truck Router. I have Truck Router in the back office. You can you can actually Google that lane. So what I mean by lane is where a load is picking up and where it's delivering to, like what I just did there. And you can look at the map here and it'll say, it even tells you right here, this route has tolls and you can, what I just did, I expanded it and you can see on the legend of it where the tolls are and things like that. So let's go. And that's truck router you said? Yeah, I have truck router in my back office. I can bring that up as well and it'll show the tolls of it. Um, Tolls vary in price between six, depending on the axles of the vehicle and things like that, how many axles it has, the, the price of the tolls vary. So if someone just asks, what's the price of the tolls and, and things like that. So in most cases, uh, if you're heading to New York, you're going to deal with tolls. If you're heading to, uh, let's see, mainly the New York area, but there's certain areas of the country that has a lot of tolls issues. And most carriers will know that. When you're even if you're new in dispatching, if you get a carrier that's been experienced and been driving for a while, they'll let you know certain areas they don't want to go to. Like, I don't want to go. How about I-76? Say that again, Joe. How about I-76? Exactly. Philadelphia, Philadelphia, yes. Correct. So, Joe, what is Joe saying is Philadelphia. So, let's go back down. Right here, I-76. So Joe's Joe's been driving for a minute too. So you got so you got toes in different areas. So in the northeast the northeast region of the country, like New York, that area, you're gonna run into toes a lot. Um, am I pronouncing your name correctly, um, uh, Tasha? Tasha, yeah, you you got it. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right. So yeah, uh, truckrouter.com. Um, I'm not sure if easypass.com will help you with the toes. I guess you would put in the um, uh, Google Maps. If you put a lane in there, it'll tell you what where the toes are for that, if there are toes in that specific lane. And again, what I mean by lane is anywhere you pick up from and deliver to is a lane or a line haul route, right? So in this example, we picked up in McAllen, Texas, and we're going to Sunnyside, New York. That is one lane or one line haul route, right? Okay. The cents per mile is the $6,500 divided by the 1990, which is $3.27, right? It pays $6,500 right now, okay? What about your percentage? You guys said you wanted 8% as a... Um, as a percentage for your, um, yes, truck router, R-O-U-T-E-R, -E truck router. Um, somebody just asked if I say truck rider, truck router, truck router. So let's Google that for you guys real quick. Get that on a resource. Yeah, going back to that I-76, I took it from beginning to end. They charged me like $193 to take that toll. $193. So here's truck router, guys. You may have to set up a, um, so it deals with all types of things in here. Trucks, uh, specific routes, weight, low clearance, truck costs, routing, uh, tolls, tolls and toll costs. So let me copy this link and put it in the chat. Oh, okay, LaDonna. Thank you, LaDonna. I forgot I got an assistant. <laughs> so, LaDonna already done it. Thank you. 
And so getting back to this one, 6,500, remember, that's what the broker is paying. Usually as a dispatcher, we want to add our percentage on top of that, right? You don't want to pull your percentage from the carrier if you, if you can, um, if you can stand it, right? You want to add your rate on top of it and try to get it on the broker side. So we said 8%, what's 8% 8 of $6,500? 6500 What What is that number? So we'll say 520. 520. Okay, 6,500 times 8%, 520. So now 60, so what's 6,500 plus 520? 70, 20. 70, 20. So we're going to round up to what? 7,100, 7,200? Yeah. Right. So when you call a broker, you want to have a number in mind now that includes your percentage on top of what the broker posted as a rate for that, for that, uh, for that route. Right. So when you call the broker, you say, Hey, um, Chop Tank, this is, this is the broker. Hey, Chop Tank, I'm calling about this load going from McAllen, Texas. It's a reefer load going from McAllen, Texas to New York, Sunnyside. Is that load still available? Please say it like that. Is that load still available? Why do you say it like that? Because sometimes, here's, here's the reason why I suggest saying it like that. Is it still available? Because sometimes brokers forget or they just leave loads up there without taking them down. They may already be covered. Um, so you say, is it still available? The broker's gonna say, let me check. Oh yeah, the load is, the load is still available. Yes, it's not, it's, it hasn't been um, covered or it hasn't been booked, right? These are terms they use. It hasn't been covered, it hasn't been booked, it's not gone, right? So you say, okay, um, We want this low. We want to do it for 7,100, 7,200, 7,300. Broker say, I can't do it for 73. Can you do it for 7,150 or 70, 7,050? 7,050 is still okay because it's still better than the 7,020 that you figured out when you added that 8% on top of the 6,500. Okay. You negotiate, you negotiate. You, you go high and the broker comes down low and you still get to your threshold of what you're trying to get paid out of that load. What happens if the broker says, I'm firm on 6,500, I cannot, I have no room to add or put more money on top of 6,500. What do you do in that case? If the broker is firm on 6,500 and they can't budge, well, first you need to understand he's a liar you are, because you are he's probably as dry as we are. I'll say you would inform the driver or you know your client that they're not budging with that amount and you still need your percentage. Okay. Yeah, and in Jay's point to Jay's point. Yeah. So yeah, if he if he's not budging, you, you want to share it with your um with your uh, carrier to see if they decide if they still want to take the load. If they say, yeah, man, 6,500 is still a good price, even though you couldn't get um, 72 or 7,300, then you say, okay, well, um, 6,500 is, is good, I agree, but remember, my percentage now, I try to negotiate my percentage on top of the 6,500, so you won't lose any money. If you still want this load, my 8% is coming out of the 6,500. So are you okay with that? So now someone deduct, subtract 520 from 6,500 and tell me what you get. Fifty nine eighty. Now divide that by the, the loaded miles, the 1990, 5980 divided by 1990. $3.01. $3.01, that's right at what I was asking for 
initially, right? I was a reefer guy. I wanted at least $3 a mile. So it's still there. And you took your dispatching percentage out of it. You're not getting to carry as much money. Uh, so yeah. Okay. My only point is the dispatcher is aiming for a percentage to make his money. Whereas the broker also is aiming for an exact same percentage to make his money. Both sides need to be flexible. The broker does not want to be flexible because the dispatchers are the new, new kids in town. They don't want to flex. But in reality, you're, you're biting for the same piece of pie. And you're taking, when you ask for more money, you're just taking it from the broker. You're not taking it from the shipper. They, you're, you're taking money out of the broker's pocket. So he's not going to negotiate easily you know, until you build a, you know, a good working relationship with the person, but don't be afraid to ask and negotiate. Don't be lazy as a dispatcher. It's your job to negotiate and, and negotiation is where it's all at. The brokers are going to be resistant because they've never had to negotiate in the past. They've only ever had to deal with the truckers, but now, now they have less power because if we're not going to negotiate with the brokers, then we're just going to go to find another load. And they know that. So they're, they're getting more flexible. So don't be afraid to ask and negotiate. You're just taking money. You're taking, you're taking away their profit. And they've been greedy for a long time, and any trucker will tell you that. So don't, don't have any shame or feel any guilt about taking some of their money because it's all about spreading the love, right? As a new dispatcher, how does that conversation go? Like for someone that has no experience or knowledge, how do you negotiate that? Well, the first thing, you, you have to know what your number is, what your percentage is. So whatever the load was that was posted on the load board by the broker that's paying to the truck, what your percentage is that you are um, looking to get out of dispatching for that carrier, 8%, 10%, whatever that number is, you come up with that number, you add your percentage on top of what the posted rate is, and, and then you that's the that's the starting point of the negotiation with the broker. You call, so let's say a load was posted for five, let's use nice round numbers. Let's say the load was posted by the broker at $5,000 and you charge 10% for your dispatching service. So 10% of 5,000 is what? 500, right? So you add 500 to the 5,000, that's 5,500. So now you go back to the broker. I will go back to the broker at 6,6200. You want to get to 5,500, but you go high enough. You don't want to go too high when you outbid yourself, but you want to go high enough where the broker comes down and it gets closer to your threshold number anyway that you're trying to get to. Okay. That's kind of like the art of negotiating there, but. Okay. So, so if I've done my math and I come prepared with the numbers, I'm looking for this much and the person says, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stick at this price. Then what do I say? What's my comeback? Well, then you say, okay, let me, uh, let me call you back or get, you know, you want to get with your carrier because if a broker tells you they're firm with that number and they're not budging, then you, you want to let, you want to share that information with your carrier. If you cannot negotiate and win that um, with that broker, you got to let your carrier know so that your carrier can decide if they still want that load or not. Because it's ultimately your carrier's decision to take the load or not. You're trying to negotiate a high enough rate where you can include your dispatching fee for it. If your carrier says, yes, they still want the load, now you have to let your carrier know like, look, okay, well, the broker didn't budge. You still seem to want the load. I still have to get paid. So my percentage is coming from the rate that we are agreeing to now. It's gonna be deducted out of that rate as opposed to being added on top of it. So you don't lose as much money, so. And Mr. Charles. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming, I'm not sure, but I think where he's trying to go with that is how do you play the negotiating game prior to getting to the point where you find out that, that the um, broker is actually firm. I mean, because just coming from a sales background, firm is not necessarily firm until, you, it, it, until it's firm. Okay, you know? so, 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 so how, do you, how do you play the negotiating, negotiating game with the numbers that he has to understand is in his head, that we have to understand is in our heads and what they know versus what we know and how to jiggle the change out of the pocket before we know it's actually firm. Okay, so that's a good point. So I'm, I'm the broker and uh, Melinda is the, <laughs> what's, your, what's your name, brother? I don't wanna call you your wife. Listen, my, 
My name is Arnold, but my fiance established the account. I'm sorry. All right, Arnold. So I'm the, I'm the broker, and I just told you I'm firm on $5,000. I'm not budget. What do you do? That's what, I, that's what we're asking you. I'm asking you now. I'm putting you on the, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm the broker. So let's help, let's help Raymond. Let's answer the question for Raymond by role playing. I'm the broker. I just told you on the road that you called me about a loan for $5,000. You wanted, you wanted $100 because, um, I believe I got somebody feedback. Yeah, let me, let me let me mute it for a second. Unmute yourself, Arnold. All right, I'm in. I'm sorry. Okay. So we just, you just found a low for 55 or $5,000. You charge 10%. Right. You charge 10%. So that's 500. So 500 plus 5,000 is 5,500, right? So you, mm -hmm. um, your, so your starting number, your, your, your threshold is, um, your baseline is 5,500. But so you go higher to like, so I'm going higher. 6,000. Let's say 6,000. Right. I tell you, I can't do six thousand, man. Hey, I'm the broker. Hey, Arnold, I can't do six thousand, man. I'm I'm firm on uh five thousand. I can't do the, uh, six thousand. I'm sorry. So what do you do? Okay, okay. So my at that point, I didn't want the six thousand anyway. I'm going to try to get him to meet me in the middle. Okay. So what do you do? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay. Um. I'm, well, I'm not sure exactly how I would how I would word, would word it, but you know. My 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 point is to to yeah, just, this, yeah, just talk. the difference. Just, let's let's, let's yeah, put, okay. Let's fine. That's cool. Let's put the difference at sixty five hundred. Fair enough. Fifty five hundred split the uh, man. I don't know, man. I got I got I got five thousand in this. I, I don't know if I can budge at even at. I know I, I okay, know we'll I will tell you. I know we'll I can't. Tell you what, my, we'll tell you what. My 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 driver's ready to pick up this load from you um from you right now. Um. He really want. He really needs the six. We really need the sixty five hundred to make it work. But he's there with you right now. If you can get, if you if you can do the sixty five, I'm sorry, the fifty five, we can get that out of here today. Uh, let me check. Let me check with my my people. And they're gonna put you on hold or something, right? Because mm -hmm. they got the money in it, right? Right. But they're trying to keep their profit margins as high as possible without taking too much money from them. From the broker, they're hustling backwards. Right. That's the broker. Just like any hustle, just like any hustle game, the more you move, the more your profit. They gotta get that. I gotta get him to understand that he's gotta get that load out of there so that he can granted it's less money than he wanted, but now he can get money from another load. He ain't gotta deal with me but for this one. So you you are you hearing that, Raymond? Thank you so much. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yes, okay. thank you. Got it. All right, Jay. Good job, thank you. I, and Raymond, what my, my only other comment was, it, it starts with the dispatcher's head. I mean, it really does. You have to understand, you're, you have to negotiate. If you're not able to negotiate at least your fee out of it, what are you doing as a dispatcher? Because your only job is to get them a load that they normally would not be able to get on their own. Now, if you, if you just take whatever load at whatever rate a broker's willing to you know, hand you as a meal, you know, without negotiating anything, a driver can do that themselves. You know, what do they need you for? You know, so you've got to be able to negotiate. Negotiation is where it's all at. You know, like I said, like Charles just said, they're trying to keep their profit margins as high as possible. That's been the, that's been the broker's game from, from day one. We are new to the party and we've got to break it down. I mean, we have just as much right to that money as what they have. So, as a dispatcher, your only job is to get the driver a load that they normally would not have been able to get themselves. You know, whether that means just getting your fee or maybe even getting a little more profit in the driver's pocket or a fuel surcharge. But if you can't negotiate something out of the deal, a driver might as well use a load board themselves. Got it, thank you. Yep, thank and um, uh, Chanel just had a question, uh, the previous question, she said, can you negotiate, I'm sorry, can someone show the last equation that got the $3.01? So what we did is, on the same load that we're looking at, McAllen, Texas, Chanel, to Sunnyside, New York, we just took the, uh, because we, we, we went with the scenario where the broker didn't budge on the 6,500, so we took our 8%, which was $520, and we subtracted it from that 6,500, and that gave us, I think it was like 5980, and then we divided that amount 
by the um, night, the loaded miles, the 1990. So 5980 divided by uh, 1990, that gave us $3.01, okay? Now, um, someone just asked, can you show how to get a carrier? Yeah, so in module one, and this is a self-paced course, guys. We just do the live trainings to answer questions live and, and get more, uh, you know, upfront personal with you guys. But module one deals with getting the carriers, how to acquire carriers and things like that, the different ways. So if you are, who asked that? Basir, Basir can you unmute yourself, please? Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. How are you, brother? Okay. So where, where are you located? What major city and state do you live in? I'm in California, Bay Area. Okay. So the Bay Area. Okay. So uh, Oakland. Oakland, yeah, closest to me. Okay. But I live in uh, Fremont, California, originally. Okay. So Fremont. So let's go to Google. Because one, one of the ways to get a carrier is truck stops. The number one way, if you can physically go to a truck stop near you and start a conversation, if you have flyers, business cards, you advertise and market yourself, sell, sell your service, sell you and sell your service. Okay. Okay. That's number one. So I'm going to go to Google and say truck stops near, and you said Fremont. Yeah. F R E M O N. M O N. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So we got some right here. I'm going to open up this map and view all of them. Just to give you an example, so we got a ton of. Once you're looking at, they are pretty small, you know, uh, basically truck stops. So the only closest, like a pilot loves, they're yeah. like seventy or eighty miles far away from me. Right, pilot love flying J. So yeah. if you don't, so if you don't have truck stops within a decent radius, like 25, 30 miles tops. Um, then you would go to another option, which is cold calling. Right. So there's several mm -hmm. options. There's there's trucks visiting truck stops. There's cold calls. There is social media marketing like LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, there's email campaigns. You can send out email blasts, um, word of mouth, several ways to 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 get um, in in the in front of a carrier. The, the point is, once you get in front of the carrier, what are you going to say? How are you going to market yourself? So if I'm a carrier, and you happen to cross, we happen to cross paths, whichever way we cross those paths, whether it was truck stops, cold calling, however, what would you, now the ball is in your court, boss here. What would you say to me as a carrier to convince me that I need you as a dispatcher? Uh, I would start, you know, say like, hi, how you doing? Uh, I'm just here with the Empire Dispatching. Uh, services. I would like to know if you're uh, under load or you're loaded. So in that case, they wouldn't let me know. Like okay, so let me, let me stop you there. Let me stop you there. Let's break it down. Let's break it down because other people who are new here, they, they're, they're hearing this for the first time, right? So, okay. so are you under a load or looking for a load? What does that mean? Let's break that down. So are you loaded? Under, under load, which means under, you're, like you, you're already loaded. You yeah, are, under under a load means you're already loaded. You're you're on your way to deliver a load. Yeah. Looking for a load means that you're empty, looking for something. So empty. let me yeah. let me respond to that. Um, I'm not under a load right now, man. Hey, uh, are you a broker? No, I'm in dispatching services, and I do dispatching uh, here out of Bay Area. And I would like to know if you are uh, willing to go forward with me. Okay. Um, now another thing too. Uh, after you ask that too, you want to get their equipment type. Like what, what do you drive? What's your equipment type? Right. Because now you can kind of like formulate get the idea. Yeah. Get the idea of what they are, how they want to run and things like that. What's um, your uh, equipment type? Right. So my, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for a load. I have, a, um, so let's see, I'm, you are the Bay area. So reefers are popular over there. So I got a, I got a reefer, man. I got a 53 foot reefer refrigerated temperature control unit. Uh, I'm looking to get back to the East Coast, man. Um, you're not a broker; you're a dispatcher. Yeah, I'd like to go to any East Coast. Yeah. You what are? do you What do you got? What do you got out there? You got anything right now? Oh yeah, I got a lot of uh, loads here actually in uh, uh, Coyote. Um, 
KOD Logistics, they have offering a lot of loads, you know, going to New York, uh, New Jersey. Uh, they're, they're paying pretty high price right now since the producer is limited to that side. Oh, let, so, me cut you off. let me cut you off there. Speaking of pay, um, so I know you don't do this for free. So what do you, what do you charge for your service, Mr. Dispatcher? I'm very flexible, man. Whatever you, were you comfortable with it? I'm, I'm down with that too. Oh, you, you no. <laughs> no, my I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna pay you two percent. As, is, as yes. it goes with you, never, no. ever, never, ever give give your control up. Charge no, what you are worth. I'm, I'm charging. Control. I'm charging like nine person right now. But as you get to know, you probably work out a little bit more. Okay. Don't we want to be, Mr. Charles? Don't we want to be careful not to not to mention where we're seeing the loads from too? Because they could just go in and get in the call and go get it themselves. That's, I'm glad you, I missed that one. Thank you very much for catching that too. So, so two things. The first thing is the gentleman just mentioned that you just let him know, okay, you got my equipment type. I'm on reefer. You just let them know that you, you're able to find loads um, for them. You don't have to tell them who the broker is and things like that. Because all they can do is like what the gentleman just said, they can just call Coyote and just circumvent you and go around you and book the loads themselves and they don't need you. Right. You never, so never show your hand, right? Just like in poker, never show your hand, right? Keep okay. the poker face going. Number two, you want to have, so know your worth, know your value, and put a number with that, right? Either a flat rate or a percentage. The percentage range is 5 to 10%, right? Okay. So when, when you say, when I say, okay, um, I know you're not doing this for free, Mr. Dispatcher. So uh, what do you charge and how much do I got to pay you? you let's say you uh, say, go ahead. I charge 9%. Okay. So I'm going to say, this is what I'm going to say, man, 9%, that's kind of high, man. Man, 9%. So now, how do you make me feel better when I make a statement like that, 9%? What would you, what are some ideas? What would you say? And I'm just going to, I'm saying this for a reason because I want to share what I used to do when I was dispatching heavily. So. Is this for the floor or just for the gentleman? This is what well, is for, for the gentleman right now, but then I want to see what everyone else can say too. So he said 9%. Oh. I'm say, man, that's too high. So Basil, what would you, how would you respond if I was to react that way? You said 9%. I'm yes. saying, man, that's kind of high, man. I don't know if I could do 9%. I'm already paying hundreds of dollars in fuel to go all over the country. I got other expenses, man. I got to pay my insurance. I got to, you know, tires get repaired. So what? Are you sure nine percent is a good number for me, man? What's what's going on, Basir? Well, um, I'm sure you worked with others too. Um, what other people they charge you for the what percentage of uh, dispatching? Okay, um, yeah, you, and you're right. I do work with other dispatchers. I don't I don't put my eggs in one basket, right? So I don't put all my eggs in one basket. I got other dispatchers. Some of my other dispatchers they're charging like five, six, at the best seven percent. So. Well, I'll, 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 I'll let you know this. Uh, I charge you 9% and I'll try to satisfy you with the mileage per pay, pay per pay mileage. Probably you get more uh, paid per mile than others uh, that you booked uh, your load before. Okay. So another thing too, you didn't ask too was what, so I have a reefer unit what do I want per mile? What am I trying to get since per mile? So you're building a verbal um, carrier profile in the conversation when you're trying to get a carrier under a dispatcher agreement. You're asking questions that are normally going to be on the profile anyway. How much weight are you trying to haul? What's the most weight you're hauling? What's the most, right. you're, you know, what do you, what do you want uh, since per mile? What areas of the country do you want to go to? What areas of the country do you want to avoid? What, yeah, what, commodi what commodities what commodities or what types of freight or cargo do you want on your trailer? Because some carriers, even though they're reefer carriers, they don't like to, to haul certain commodities like strawberries, like right. chickens, like raw chickens or packaged chickens because of the smell. They got to go to truck washes to wash their truck out because of the smell. So that's an extra expense. So right. certain things like that. So let me open the floor, the same question to everybody else. When he said 9%, and I said, oh, man, that's too much, man. Who, what would, what would be a good rebuttal to that? Anyone? A, a good I'm rebuttal. Out of your pocket, what, we, what we do is tag our percentage on with the rate low. So therefore, nothing comes out of your pocket. Okay, that's a good one, Warina. Anyone else? Warina said that 
So the nine percent is not really coming out of your pocket, Mr. Carrier. We're gonna uh -huh. we're gonna attempt to in most cases always our first option is to negotiate our percentage on top of the rate from the broker side. That way it doesn't come out of your pocket. That was Warina's response. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Yeah, I go I go along with uh Warina. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got another one too. It would be it would be determined upon how I negotiate with the freight broker, and, and see if I can get my my fees tacked on to to the uh, to what what they paying for the load. Right. So so here and, and this is what I used to do too. In addition to what Warina said, I negotiate. I put my numbers on top of and negotiated with the um, with the broker, and then I also add. There will be, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Carrier, there will be cases where brokers will be firm in their rates. When those instances happen, I make sure I communicate with you let you know so you can decide if you still want that load. If you right. still want that load, understand, Mr. Carrier, that, or Mrs. Carrier, because women carriers out there too, understand that my, my percentage has to come out of the rate in either case because I still have to get paid for my service. So, right. They kind of respect you for that because you're letting them know that you're going to first attempt to negotiate the rate on top. But if you can't and you're unsuccessful with that, then you got to let them know that it's coming out wherever it's coming out of, right? Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would, I would kind of, I would, I would kind of, if I can't get the, the, uh, the rate that you really want with my, with my, my fee on top, then I'll, I'll lower it down to say 7%. Okay, so you're kind of arguing with them because now you're thinking like volume because if you go from nine to seven, you say, okay, 7% is good. I, I'm, I'm, I feel that I'm going to have a long relationship with you. So we're going to build up a volume of loads over time. So right, I'm going to make my working. money regardless. Right, I'm going to keep you out there grind. Right. Hey, okay. I, got a, I got another angle on that too, man. I, I, might, I might throw that in there first. Um, go ahead. I might, I might try to hit them with you know of course everything based on what you guys said as far as get on top of the broker but i'll be like well hey you know what i'm saying I, I do get on top of the broker but hey for this first one how about i run it for let's say i told them i charge 10 percent. how about this first load i get for you i'll only charge you five percent just so we can get a feel for each other see how we both work how we operate how we can communicate that way i'm not really digging into your pocket you get a feel for me and then after that first run after that first run, you know, we go back to our 10% and, you know, we keep it moving. But like I said, you know, I do always try to get on top of the broker. So I'm never really trying to come out of your pocket. I'm trying to get, get in a pocket. That's a good incentive. That's a good incentive. I would, if I was a carrier, I'd jump on that. Go ahead, Jay. I, I, on the exact same line, you got to remember what he was just referring to was uh, you as a dispatcher communicating with your carrier and, and cut your cutting your rate down to establish a good relationship with the carrier. Play that same game. Play that same game with the broker themselves. You know, the broker's not going to budge on the rate. So all you do is, you, you know, if he's not going to budge, you can't negotiate every time. There's rates that can't change. Obviously, there's things that don't change all the time. So what you could say to the broker is, hey, you know, we talked before the last couple of weeks about time frame and the window. How long has that load been posted? He's not going to budge on his rate the first 10 minutes that load is posted. But when it's getting closer and closer to pickup time, he'll be willing to budge. So right. what you do is warm him up. You know, the idea of cold calling in sales, think of a warm call. Tell the broker, hey, you don't want to negotiate? That's fine. My driver's not willing to negotiate either. Tell you what, I'll give you a call back in 24 hours. If that load's still sitting, maybe we can negotiate then. Remember, my name's Jay. I'll be calling you tomorrow. And then, hey, then you've got, hey, then you've hey, got a Jay, warm me... seat waiting on you. Then you've got a warm seat in 24 hours. And if that load doesn't book in the next 24 hours, your driver wasn't willing to take that load at the first rate anyway. You've lost nothing. If it is booked or if it's not yet booked, when you call that broker, he's going to remember your name. As soon as you call, he's going to realize that load still hasn't moved. And he's going to wonder if it ever will move at the rate he posted. So he will be willing to negotiate on day number two. So warm him up and, and, and walk away from it. Hey, Great Jay, ass. that's facts right there. That's big yeah, facts that's, right uh, there. Yeah, that's facts. Let me, let me, get, let me get y'all something else on that one. So let's say you do see a, you do have a broker, right? And then they're not willing to negotiate because I've done this before, too. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm not willing to budge or whatnot. And the, the, the dispatcher has told me, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this load off your hands, blah, 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 blah. But the next time you get it, 
we got to come with a bigger bag, you know what I'm saying? Which, which was understandable because he, he worked with me probably in a situation where, you know, I, I, I couldn't do too much. So the next time I might not be able to give him everything he needs, but you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep back my mind. Like, Hey, you know, when I was in a bind, he did it for me when I know he didn't want that rate. So, you know, I might have a little bit extra in it. Let me throw him an extra hundred or throw him an extra 50 or something. To let him know like, Hey, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate it last time. I'm going to see what I can do for you this time. Or if I get low, I'm going to call you first before I post it, you know, which is great for a dispatcher who's like, man, they call me. Y'all even have to look for the load. So you can build relationships like that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Mr. Charles, yes. Mr. Charles, the, the gentleman that just speaking, is he a broker? Is that the yeah, gentleman that's yeah. the broker? Yeah. Um, okay. If, uh, the reason the reason I, well, I ask is that that's funny because I was thinking about this earlier. When you when you're trying to go into a negotiation with 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 person with 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 the, with the second party or third party, the best the, what you need is information about them and what they need, and how they how they work, understanding how they think. I think Joe Joe touched on it earlier. Um, so, you know, where how can we? I guess it's good that we have him in here, but how do we find out? how that system works on that end. We don't need to know everything. We just need to know, you know, how the money works for um 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 how the money moves on that end, how how they get paid and how the system works for them, what's important to them, how does time affect them? Because those are all things that you need on the one on one negotiation between us and them. That has nothing to do with the driver. The driver benefits from our knowledge. Correct. Yeah, well for money money wise, they're not gonna tell you what they're from a money standpoint, you're not gonna know anything the broker has. You're not gonna, they're not gonna just off the top tell you, well, hey, I, I have to get this amount of money or whatnot. Um, as far as time strengths though, um, the advantage a driver has is kind of like what Jay said, if a load is still there the next day, I mean, that means they're behind on getting that load picked up and delivered. So now it's getting into a situation where they're going to be more desperate to cover it because it's aging. they're already it's aging. unfulfilling the yeah they're unfulfilling the, the satisfaction of the customer. The customer is right. the, the customer is key. The customer pays everybody. The customer pays brokers, brokers pay dispatchers and drivers. You know what I'm saying? So the customer is important. So if you got a load and it's there Monday and then you see it Tuesday, if you see it on Wednesday, oh, you better you they they they, they are willing to probably throw they mad at themselves that they still got their load. I guarantee you. Unless you just Yeah. Hello? We lost you for a minute, Jay. I mean uh, Ariel. I th I think I think what I was well, more so trying to get at with the money thing is not necessarily, you know, like I mean, did the does the broker determine what they did they do they decide what they're getting paid like we do? Yeah. Or the broker, are they given the are they are they allotted a certain amount by the the I mean, is it like I tell you, I tell you, like I tell you, Charles, hey, I'm gonna give you ten thousand dollars to move this. Um, and how you get it done is on you. You understand what I'm saying? Or yeah. is it a set rate? Right. So the brokers, the brokers get their they have a target rate that they receive from their shippers, right? From the customers. Mm -hmm. The brokers right. have, bad, have margins that they that they take off the top and then they sell those loads to the carrier. The brokers already got their inf their information of what their margins are. You would not know that dispatchers or carriers would not know that, right? But what what the broker has on that load? So that so mm -hmm. for example, that sixty five hundred dollar load that we had on that load board, mm -hmm. that load could have been coming from the shipper for like eight thousand dollars or eighty five hundred, and the broker could have took two thousand off the top and then posted it for sixty five hundred. We wouldn't know that because brokers' margins right. were between twelve to twenty percent standard, right? So you you wouldn't know that. But, well, even that, even that's good news to know. That's even that's valuable information to know that right there. So yeah, because I mean, at least it gives you an imaginary position to to, to play with. I mean, because you don't know who your who your he's not your opponent, but he really is. But if you don't know who's on the other side of that phone and what their needs are and what they're working with, then, you know, the more information you have, the better you are. Oh, in yeah, negotiation. That, yeah, but that's why I always say when you are negotiating as a dispatcher. I mean, you always want to go. You want to go higher than what your target rate really is, anyway. And then you you never really you really want the broker to give you a number first if possible. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because 
I'm telling you, man, whoever get a number first is at a disadvantage because you already right. know where, where the ball where the, where the ball game going to be played. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if they give you a number, you're like, okay, so now I got to counter that. If, you, if you're able to counter, you got an advantage. But if they give you a number, I mean, if you get them a number first, and they already know where they were at. Like, if you give me 900, and, I mean, in my mind, I was thinking, like, hey, I, I could, I was going to do 900 anyway. I'm going to say 800 just to see if you're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. Right. Who's thinking first? All right, guys. Um, Ali has her hand up. Ali's the last question. We're going to um, – it's 803. We'll kind of wind it down. But this – great, great, great training as usual. Ali, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes, Charles. Okay, so when we're looking for a load, do you suggest we look for older ones first, since those are the ones that have to, you know, they have to go, or we stick with, like, recent ones that they just posted? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> strategy. That's a good that's a, that's a good strategy, because you look for the old age. So on a load board, it shows the age of the load, how long it's been posted, eight hours, ten hours, things like that. Um. <laughs> If a load's been up there that long, either it's up there by mistake and the broker forgot to take it down, or it's really up there and it needs to be booked, right? But that's a good question. Let me see what Jay has to say about that one. What do you got to say about that one, Jay? I, I'm not I'm not that experienced, but the little bit that I've learned recently is um, the the longer they've aged, while while it seems logical that it would be much more uh, negotiable, what I've found is the ones that have aged longer that you would think would negotiate easily. Oftentimes those loads, those particular brokers, if you read, I, I think on uh, what is it? The, the, the dad board, uh, the reviews on the broker are often horrible. So I'm reading this, this load that's been sitting for a long time. It looks like it has a decent rate and everything. I'm like, man, I should call this one, you know? And then I click the reviews and there's like 65 bad reviews on the broker not paying his bills on time and uh, leaving people with no detainee fees or, you know, whatever. There, so, so a lot of times they're sitting for a reason, not because they couldn't book, but because nobody's interested in working with that broker. So that, yeah. that's one thing you want to consider. If there's a way to research the broker themselves, you'll find that there's some credit issues or, or just angry, angry uh, carriers that have worked with them before. Great, great. All right, guys. Hey, um, man, thanks. Hey, for hey, Charles. Yes. One more thing, Charles. Also, if it's been sitting like that, you kind of run the risk of like appointment times being screwed up. So now you go and you in a situation where everything is a work in. So you know you might have your driver ready to roll at twelve p.m. And, you know, since it's a work in, you're looking at like a five p.m. pickup now, and your driver's sitting all day. And I know for drivers, they hate that. That's that's they hate that. Yeah. So you kind of you got to kind of make sure like you have a legit appointment time still. Even though I've seen that load grow for a couple of days, make sure like you know like hey, I, I've seen this load now. So is the pickup and delivery times still legit? Where's it gonna be a working everywhere? Because some working areas, man, they have you sitting all day. It's, it's horrible. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Hey Charles, I got I got a question for you, or I could just call you tomorrow. I know you, I know you're trying to close it down. Yeah, you certainly could call me tomorrow. Um, uh, uh, LaDonna has been putting my contact information in the chat. So, you know, give me a call. I'm an early bird. So I get up at 4 or 5 a.m. to work out and then I'm in the office or whatever. So um, I'll try to catch you midday. Uh, you know, I got a couple more questions for you, but I, I know it's getting late for you. Yeah, and if you want to send them via email, I can respond um, also via email. Oh, okay. Um, just get your email off uh, off the chat. Yeah, Exodus Logistics off either off the website, off the chat, Exodus Logistics LLC at yahoo.com. Um, the phone number, you can text me an email, you know, however. So but yeah. that number I called you on earlier today, uh, I could text you on that one. That's correct. Yeah, right here is my cell phone. Let me let me bring my camera back up. Yeah, I, yeah. My cell Yep, the only number that I use. <laughs> uh, yep. That's no problem. Uh, hold on. It's that uh, 757 number, right? That's correct, Virginia. Yep, 757. Okay, I'll, I'll send you a text. And if you want, man, you can lock me in. Okay. Right, we'll stay Good night, everybody. Okay, guys. Um, our next training, 
Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's another basic level. This didn't. This did not seem basic, but <laughs> because we started to get into a little bit more detail of everything to kind of break it down. But there's a certain outline that you want to follow and stay within, and we go over that repetitively. And then there's terms that we come across to kind of help you define what they are, so you will really understand it. We. I, my goal is to make you very good dispatchers where you, when you talk to a carrier, they want you to dispatch for them. They'll be calling That's because you're, you. you're a great instructor, Mr. Monday. You make us think. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I want you guys to, I want you guys to um, be able to not only dispatch for the carriers. I have some dispatchers who are educating their carriers, um, surprisingly, right? Some carriers who, are, especially the new carriers, one who just got their MC up and running, don't know what to do next, right? So they got a dispatcher that's helping them, and now they're in a good relationship. So stuff like that. That's what you want. You want to not. You don't want it just to be a job. You want it to be a relationship between you and your carrier. You know, they're feeding their family. You're feeding your family, and you guys are doing it together. Okay. Um. All right, guys, Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Any questions you guys can call me. I answer my phone. I may not answer like right then and there, but I do answer it, right? So email me, call me, any clarity, any issues with navigating the website, you wanna know where something is and how to get to it, how to access the load boards, anything like that, reach out to me. The, the website kind of explains it to you in every section, but if you still need some clarity, just let me know and I will definitely explain it to you. All right. All right. So Saturday at 12 noon. Talk to you. Yes, guys. sir. Have a great evening, guys. Be safe out there. Good night. All right.